What's going on, guys, and welcome back to the Inside the One podcast yet again with Spitz. And guys, this is our fourth podcast. So, guys, if you haven't been watching them, go back and do yourself a favor and watch the first three episodes. Uh, I only have one on my channel; the other two are on Spitz's channel. Um, basically, up to this point, we've just been going over free agency, just big moves, uh, general information, uh, rumors, Deshaun Watson, all you know, all that kind of stuff. We've been covering it as much as possible. Um, but today, since it's been a quiet week as far as the NFL goes, so today we're just going to go over, basically we're going to be grading each team as far as their free agency offseason has gone. So um, basically we're just going to go down the list. We do have a couple of things to go over, like, you know, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of stuff happened during the week. But after that, we're going to go over each team and grade them based on how we feel their offseason has gone. Um, but yeah, so Spitz, you want to say a quick hello real quick? Yeah, absolutely. How we doing, boys and ladies, of course. Can't forget the ladies. Make sure, uh, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to both channels because you don't want to miss any episodes. I put a poll up asking if you guys enjoy the, the damn podcast and 42% of you guys said what podcast. So check the damn podcast out and let us know what we you think in the comments. We posted in the Discord. Section. We posted in the Discord. We posted on Twitter. Guys. You know, I know how the YouTube algorithm works. I'm not stupid. But if you guys do see it, click on it, watch it. Let us know your feedback in the comment section. And uh, yeah, I guess we just jump right into it. Yeah. Just remember, guys, that this is just, it's a different type of Madden, so it's just like, this needs a little bit more support than the rest of everything, because we're trying to get this one pushed to, you know, to fit the algorithm and stuff like that, so make sure you show us some love for this one. But yeah, let's jump right into it. So we're going to start with uh, new free agent signings, um, the first one being former Washington tight end Thaddeus, I hope I said his first name, Thaddeus, Thaddeus I think it's Thaddeus. Moss. Thaddeus, okay, yeah. I said it wrong twice. Thaddeus <laughs> Moss, the son Thaddeus? of Randy... Th- Thaddeus sounds like a Greek god. Uh, <laughs> the son of Randy has been claimed by the Bengals. Maybe a good... I mean, I don't know. Son of Randy. It could be promising. I heard he went off in LSU. I mean, you probably know more than I do about this one, Spitz. Want to talk yeah, about he, was, he was really good in LSU. I don't really know what's happened in the NFL. But, um, you know, he looked his best with Joe Burrow at quarterback. So, I'd have to imagine that Joe Burrow probably had something to do with this decision. Much like the likely draft selection of Jamar Chase, so they're they're building the LSU national championship offense over there in Cincinnati. It looks like, but um, they have some tight end. They have CJ Uzoma and Drew Sample already, but like talent wise, I feel like Thaddeus Moss can be better than both of those. I just don't know if like he's going to produce that way, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the next big signing that we can talk about is Giovanni Bernard is signing a one-year deal with the Bucks. So I think last week we kind of talked about him getting released after being with the uh, the Bengals for eight years, and yeah. now he's trying to go with the Buccaneers, maybe chasing a ring. Oh, for sure, yes, that's what it sounds like. Hundred. Listen, when you've been stuck in Cincinnati for a long time, you chase a ring, bro. That's why so, I'm. I mean, that's why it was weird to me that AJ Green ended up in Arizona. Not that that's a bad team, but it's like, bro, you could have went to other places to chase a ring i guess yeah i mean hey that's honestly that mustache alone needs a ring so i mean <laughs> I, hope, I hope he gets it just for the sake of that i guess um next thing i get this is probably one of my favorite signings if not my most favorite uh the panthenier uh panthenier's the what panthenier's is that? wow that's hey. a crazy team now introducing <laughs> the uh the, the tampa line of panthenier's and their the new quarterback I'm sorry. I've been playing a lot of franchise guys. Buccaneers is my team, so I excuse me for that one. Um, the the Panthers signed former Pro Bowl seed uh, AJ Boye, gave him a two year deal worth like seven it. million. I like, I like it. That. I like that one. Yeah, for I sure. Mean, Panthers have yeah, a good I mean, secondary. Who? So there's a they already have a guy that's pretty speedy out there. Can't remember his name at the top of my head right now, but. AJ Boye on the other side of him might be a good secondary move. I mean, I, I know they got rid of Trey Boston, but still, I, I like the Panthers offseason. We're going to go over a little bit more, but I do like the signing. Yeah, I can tell you that other corner in a second right here in one second because I'm, yeah, I'm kind of pissed off that I can't think of his name either. Hang he, on. He's a fast guy. That's all I know. He's really I know, good at mutt. I know. It's and me I just can't. Dante Jackson. Me. That's Dante Jackson. That's yes. it. So, oh, yeah. my God. That was bothering me so much. Okay, yes. Dante Jackson, AJ Boye. That's a good one, too. With Jeremy Chin at safety, yeah. that's it. I like it. I like the secondary for the Panthers. Um, and then the Raiders, they have brought back Carl Joseph, their former first rounder. Interesting. It is interesting. You know, why get rid of him in the first place? I don't know. I mean, 
<laughs> I don't really see a whole lot of uh, players who got drafted. They leave that team and then come back to the team they originally got drafted from. I hardly ever see that. So definitely a rare signing or a rare move, in, in my opinion. And True. then uh, lastly, the Seahawks, they are re-signing Demarius Randall. Uh, but they're going to call him a cornerback and not a safety. I guess it's a move more to his roots. I guess that's what he played in college, I'm assuming. And, yeah, so that's what the Seahawks did this past week. Nice. You want to talk about it all real quick? I don't know who that is. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. The name sounds section. familiar. <laughs> but I feel like maybe he's just been slow this past couple of years. I don't know. His name sounds familiar. Yeah. Carl Joseph oh, is cool for the Raiders, but I don't know about Demarius Randall and how much of an impact. They do need some cornerback help, though. So, I mean, if he's good, then good for them. I just, I'm not familiar with who that is. Yeah. We're going to go over the cornerback situation in, uh, in the Seahawks after in a little bit, but I just, I, that's definitely something that's going to help them for sure. Um, now we're going to go over free agency updates and rumors. Uh, the Browns are hosting Jadavion Clowney again on Wednesday. So, we're recording this on Tuesday. So, tomorrow. Um, they both have shown sides uh, of interest moving forward, and I feel like, you know, eventually something's got to happen. I mean, this is not his first time going to Cleveland. This is two years year. in a row. Yeah, two years, bro. Just get it over with already. I feel like they're going to sign him, guys. This Tomorrow is, is probably the day. This is, like, this is like when the, when, when the little, little, little kid's afraid to ask the cheerleader to prom and just keeps putting it. Just do it, bro. Just fucking sign him, for God's sake. And then you're going to have Miles Garrett and Jadavion Clowney. I know Jadavion Clowney is turning into a little bit of a bust and stuff, but like, I feel like if he's on a team that just has endless pass rushers, that he's going to be able to prosper. Yeah. I mean, as long as he can get that work ethic situation figured out over <laughs> yeah, there, that's going to be a dangerous pass rush with him. I'm, I'm going to save it for later, but I'm just saying the pass rolls are going to be disgusting. All right. Uh, general NFL news, guys. So big news that ha happened this week. Julian Edelman, three-time Super Bowl champion. Super Bowl, I can't read the Roman numerals, but he was an MVP in one of them. <laughs> 53. Uh, 53. <laughs> and uh, he's on the Patriots all-decade team. And he said when the wheels fall off that's going to be his last day and the wheels fell off finally so uh do you, you think know he's what? going to make the hall of fame because i see people talking about that on twitter and it's kind of making me i a think bit he angry. will just because of the rings and the mvp and i'm sure he's made the pro bowl a few times and he was one of tom brady's he's never made the pro one i don't think he's ever made the pro bowl I looked never made yesterday. all right well even without that i mean the accolades that i just read I mean, he was one of Tom Brady's favorite targets, and I don't see why he wouldn't. But here's, based on that. I've seen people get in there for less. Here's my question, though. is like, Isn't there this whole thing about Ryan Fitzpatrick to qualify for the Hall of Fame has to make it to the Pro Bowl? Is that a thing, or is it like only if you've never won a Super Bowl, you have to go to a Pro Bowl? How does the Hall that of Fame I don't know qualifications the work? I know my all thing about is like, the Fitzgerald thing. It's like, yeah, he won three Super Bowls and had a Super Bowl MVP, and he was a good player. But like I told, I was talking to Jeff earlier. There was this thing on Twitter I saw that he was ne he never even led white people in receiving yards in a single season ever. So I was like, and I know that's not like a you know, it's kind of whatever. But everybody always thought of Julian Edelman as being like the best little white slot guy, and he just wasn't even that in his era. And you have guys like Torrey Holt, and I think it's Reggie Wayne. It's either Reggie Wayne or Marvin Harrison, but I want to say Reggie Wayne. One of those Colts guys is not in the Hall of Fame. So how are we talking about Julian Edelman? It doesn't make sense to me. Maybe well, I'm just... I mean, obviously, he's probably not going to get in there right away. I mean, we we'll probably won't see this happen for another maybe five, ten years. Reggie Wayne's been talked about, especially this past year. He was supposed to get in. I don't know if he... He didn't make the finalists. Makes no sense. But, I mean, we'll see. I mean, like you said, Fitzpatrick, I mean, he needs a, uh, he needs a Pro Bowl vote to even get... To be eligible. So I don't know how that works specifically but yeah. I, I feel like just based on what he's done with tom brady and the super bowls and stuff like that i think he will we'll see we'll see and uh the other big one was taylor gabriel former falcons and bears wide receiver retiring after only six seasons yeah it's kind of weird do I, mean? I don't even think he was doing that bad i i, I it's kind of a weird situation i mean Unless he, he just i don't doesn't... think he was bad Unless he just doesn't like football anymore. I mean, after playing for those two teams, I wouldn't either. But I'm just... 
I mean, you've seen other receivers playing for the same team. I mean, look at Julio, look at Allen Robinson. I mean, they've been playing for uh, teams that haven't really done a whole lot in the postseason, but they're still kicking. They, they want to, you know, at least get to the Hall of Fame. But, you know, maybe this guy was just after rings and – I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to make excuses of why he would even retire yeah. so early. So it looks like it looks like he so he was an opt out for COVID this year. So he didn't play. Uh, and I guess he just he like a... got a taste of the free life and was like, you know what? I've made my money. I was a seventh round I was an undrafted player actually. Played seven years in the NFL, mm. got his decent bag, and went to the Super Bowl with the Falcons. And it's just kind of like that's enough for me. I'm good. I don't need to worry about this, all this CTE and all that nonsense. I have the money I need to live my life and be happy. So good for him, I guess. Yeah, can't be mad at that. Can't be mad yeah. at that. All right. So like I said, it was kind of a light week as far as NFL. That's pretty much it. Now we're gonna go into the fun stuff of this episode. So we're gonna talk about each grading. Uh, we're grading every single team for the off season. We're gonna start in alphabetical order, which means we're gonna start with Arizona. So, notable additions, A.J. Green, J.J. Watt, Matt Prater, Rodney Hudson. Notable departures, Kenyon Drake, Hasem Reddick, and Patrick Peterson. I gave them a B, just because, I mean, yeah, the quality of the people that they signed, you got A.J. Green, J.J. Watt, both of those guys are going to be uh, at least, you know, I don't know if they're Hall of Fame worthy, but I mean, they're definitely quality picks, and Rodney Hudson's really good. Um, but then you, I mean, Patrick Pearson's kind of aging a little bit. The only one that really hurts to me is Reddick, but I feel like, you know, JJ Watt is going to be nice on defense as well. So that's why I gave him a B. Maybe. What do you think? Spitz? Yeah, I agree. I gave him a B minus. I just think there's more, they need more than what they have right now. Like AJ Green is cool, but he's, you know, possibly washed he had a really bad season we don't know for sure if he's washed or not because the Bengals quarterback situation was atrocious and they have other good wide receivers there so it was kind of a weird thing for him jj watts coming in you know how good is he still we don't really know so it's like i'm not even like extremely excited about those two signings i think they're good but it's like how good does that make them just adding two old veterans a kicker and rodney hudson I'm not really sure. Losing Pat Pete, yeah. losing Hassan Reddick, losing Kenyon Drake. Like, those are all starters. So, I don't know. Not bad. B minus. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that's going to affect my grading going forward is if Larry Fitzgerald actually retires. That's a huge loss. And, I mean, that means AJ Green's going to have that much more uh, responsibility as far as, like, pulling people away from Christian Kirk and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, but right now, I say it's a B. Um, I'll give you the Falcons real quick. Okay. Falcons are having a rough day, man. Rough, rough, rough time, rough month. Um, they've added linebacker Brandon Copeland, running back Mike Davis, Eric Harris, Barkevius Domingo, Lee Smith. Not 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 exciting. Nothing exciting there. Mike Davis is a backup for the Panthers. That's your biggest signing. That's pretty bad. And on yeah. top of that, you lost Alex Mack, who's like a Hall of Fame center. You lost Demonte Kazi. You lost Ricardo Allen and Keanu Neal, both your safety. Like, oh boy, it's it's rough. Eric it's Harris. Ugly. Eric Harris does not replace Ricardo Allen and Keanu Neal together. Nope. No. D plus. Yeah, I, I gave them an F, a fail, just because of the fact that you got rid of basically your whole entire secondary. And what, you only have Eric Harris to uh, kind of bring people, someone back? I mean, you can't answer three losses with one uh, signing. It just it doesn't work like that. And Alex Mack, I mean, that was probably, I don't know the, the Falcons' offensive line that well, but I mean, when I, the first person that I think of is Alex Mack, and mm -hmm. you lost him. So, Dude, I think the Falcons, it's an F. The Falcons have been an F since the Super Bowl. Just a non-stop <laughs> F. They got to get it together. Fail. They got to get yeah. it together. Decide what they want to do with this draft and get it together, bro. Seriously. Um, I'll do my team, the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I took bias as much as I possibly could out of this one, and I think I did a pretty good job of, you know, not favoriting that too much. Uh, they got Kevin Zietler, Geno Stone, and Sammy Watkins. Uh, Mark Ingram left, so did Willie Sneed. Matt Skura, Unique Nagakwe, Matthew Judon, Des Bryant. 
So I gave them a D just because I see way more losses than I see gain. I mean, the only quality signing that I do see is Kevin Zietler. Yes, that's good. Not, not taking away anything from that signing. But, however, you did not really answer the problems with the pass rush. You got Nikiko Gakwe gone. You got uh, Matthew Judon gone. The wide receiver core is getting thinner because you got rid of Dez, who was starting. Okay, I mean, and then you have Willie Sneed, who I think is a wash between Sammy Watkins. We kind of just missed the entire boat on signing any good wide receivers out there. Um, and then it seems like we're, I mean, I like Mark Ingram, but it seems like we're leaning on our rookies and Gus Edwards. And, I mean, I like the Matt Skira thing. I mean, I, I didn't like him as a center. But, I mean, I might have been a little bit too harsh. Like, maybe now that I'm thinking about it, it might be a C. But, I don't think, I don't know. Until I see some, maybe some quality. I mean, maybe the draft, okay? Maybe that's the answer for us. Maybe we're going to get some good edge. Maybe we'll get, maybe we'll take another stab at it in the wide receiver. I saw something crazy today that we signed, like, a lot of wide receivers in the past. I think we, we are the team that signed the most wide receivers in the past three years. It was the draft. It was the draft. It was the draft. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, knowing that we do not draft well, you sh that should be common sense right there to just be like the Patriots and just get them all through free agency because it's not going to happen through this, the draft. So, yeah. that's that's just my grading. You can explain your uh, grade here if you want. Yeah, I gave him a C plus. I, you know, just figure – that the Kevin Zeitler signing was enough to warrant a C plus, as opposed to giving him a negative grade. They haven't really done a whole lot. Des Bryant, who cares? Really, he didn't do anything. Really, Sneed, whatever. Skura is okay. Yannick was fine, but they're actually talking to, to Justin Houston, so it's like Yannick's not even going to matter if you sign Justin Houston. So if they sign him, then my my grade will definitely change. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's just like C plus is good enough. C plus is good enough. Um, All right. Yeah, so now we have the Bills. Bills are doing good. Gave the Bills a B plus. Added Emmanuel Sanders, which is nice. They got a nice backup in Mitch Trubisky. Uh, tight end Jacob Hollister is nice as a little. Is he their backup tight end? I don't even know. Pretty sure. I want to say yes. They added Matt Breida for their whack run game, and the only guys they lost is John Brown and Josh Norman. So Josh Norman got stiff armed straight to Satan, and I don't even think he signed yet. He he got stiff armed so bad that he's still a free agent, and then. John Brown, I mean, Emmanuel Sanders, John Brown, like, John Brown's better, but it's not that big of a deal for your third or fourth wide receiver who really cares. So B+, plus, doing good. I mean, can't do much better unless they were to, like, I don't even know, B+. Plus. Okay. I gave him an A, A minus, somewhere in there. I couldn't really land on, like, an actual, but, I mean, I like it just because they've been so, they're, they're adding a lot more than they're losing here. I mean, you're getting Emmanuel Sanders. Yes, I believe John Brown's a little bit better than Emmanuel Sanders as well. But, I mean, like, again, I mean, Josh has so many weapons. Who, what, what is that third or fourth, maybe fifth string? Why should it going to really matter? Um, Mitch Trubisky, I mean, that was a starter quality for the Bears, okay? And then now, just in case something happens down the road with Josh, you still have money Mitch to take over just in case. And we know um, how, we know how you, important that is when you look at, like, what the Saints have been doing the last two years. Yeah, I mean, a, look at the Chiefs in the playoffs against the Browns, you know? I mean, they almost fell apart. So, exactly. You, never know and then josh norman i mean we all know what happened to him you know rest <laughs> in peace. Uh, he, i think he died that day but, um, hey josh yeah. the saints the saints need a cornerback bro we don't care about your stiff arm please vet Every minimum <laughs> uh we'll move on to the carolina panthers i it was hard for me to grade this team just because it's been so it, there's been a lot of wash going on here so let's look at talk about their additions uh you get pat f line uh you got denzel perryman hasten reddick David Moore, uh, Cam Irving, Dan Arnold, Morgan Fox, Sam Darnold. I'll repeat that. Sam Darnold. Huge. And then uh, Mike Davis left, though. So did Curtis Samuel, Trey Boston, and Russell Okun. So I gave them a C plus just because I like what they've done as far as getting that quarterback problem fixed. Sam Darnold is the future for the Panthers. Um, I do like Hayson Reddick a lot. You saw, I saw what he did over there in Car I mean, not Carolina, Arizona. And yeah, um, I mean, the Trey Boston thing kind of hurts a little bit. Mike Davis, I mean, he he was only there when Christian McCaffrey was hurt. So I'm hoping that Sam Darnold actually using the pass game is going to lighten up the load for Christian McCaffrey, therefore making Mike Davis not so important. And I, I think Russell Okung's, I mean, that hurts a little bit, but that's why I gave it an average uh, score of uh, C, C+. Plus. Yeah, I gave it a C-, minus, but I'm going to change it because we just took a little bit of an L right here. We just talked about A.J. Boye and didn't add him to this thing. 
Oh, we so that that, one. <laughs> that actually takes my C minus to a C plus. Um, okay, yeah, I still hold with my C plus because uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, that helps. That helps with the secondary losing Trey Boston or whatever. Getting the second corner, Jeremy Chin's a real deal. Yeah. Russell Okung, you know, is he? I mean, I know he was really good when he was like younger. I don't even know if he's still all that. Curtis Samuel I mean, loss sucks, but they already have two good wide receivers. I like Dan Arnold when he played for the Saints for I think one or two years. I always thought that he was better than kind of the career path that he's been on. But I like it. David Moore is good too. Replacement for Curtis Samuel. They're doing okay. Okay. Then we got the Bears next, don't we? I'll let I'll let you do that one. Uh yeah, the Bears. Um F plus. <laughs> I mean, F plus. Listen, anytime I don't even know why I gave them an F plus. I think I'm just being too nice of a guy. But like anytime mm. guys, okay, I was reading an article while I was researching this stuff. And this person who I believe, you know, he he, you know, goes over NFL unbiasedly. Was talking about how they released Kyle Fuller to save cap space so that they could trade for Russell Wilson. Uh, they didn't. They instead signed Andy Dalton. So not only did they lose Mitchell Trubisky, but they lost Kyle Fuller and didn't even get Russell Wilson back. L. That's, and they lost Cordero Patterson, who's one of the best kick returners of all time. Just, just an all-around L, dude. Terrible. Terrible, yeah. terrible, terrible, terrible. This is terrible. They are right there with Houston. They will be competing for whoever the next quarterback coming out of the draft is next year. That team is terrible. I'm sorry. I mean, I wasn't as harsh as Spitz. I did give him an F, just not an F+. Plus. I mean, that F+, plus is just smack in the mouth to Chicago. I mean, yeah, it, this team's awful. I mean, if we're being brutally honest here, I mean, we you know, we don't try to cap around here. It's Andy Dalton. That's your answer? Yeah. Get rid of Mitch for Andy. Ooh, I'm Desmond Trufant. Ooh. Desmond Trufant's washed. Bro. I mean, he's been around the league for a long time. Uh, and Damian Williams, I mean, you already had David Montgomery, who was kind of yeah. like your feature back. So it's like, that's a pointless signing. And then, you, like I said, yeah, the whole Cordero Patterson, Kyle Fuller, that's a huge, huge, huge loss. I don't know. Why and even Mitch Trubisky, that. you downgraded to Andy Dalton. Like, I know Mitch Trubisky wasn't doing the best, but God damn it. Why didn't they wait to well, find was, out what was going to happen with Russ before they made this move? Yeah, I mean, Mitch was gone regardless because he basically just said F the Bears and their ownership. I hate this team, basically. Nick Foles, that whole situation. Uh, I get it. Like they benched him and then he came back and went six and two and made the playoffs. And it's like now you have Andy Dalton. So you had Mr. Trubisky and Nick Foles, and now you just have Andy Dalton. Yeah. L. Going the wrong, going in the wrong direction, Chicago. And you all want to trade? Playoffs. Y'all talking about trading Anthony Miller? So you're not even going to have nobody for Andy Dalton to throw to? Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson. Please trade Allen Robinson. Like, you know what else we didn't add in here? What? Taylor Gabriel is retired, so that's another loss in yeah, wide receiver. Yeah, exactly. We didn't say, yeah, just all around, not not looking good, Chicago. I'll take the next one just to spare uh, the heat coming off of Spitz's channel here. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. So, notable additions. They got Trey Hendrickson. They got Riley Reef, Chidobe Awuzie, Mike Hilton, Larry Ogunjobi. So here's, okay, before I go into the next part, I, I get all those additions, okay, guys? I get them all. But hear me out on the departures. This is where you got to listen up, guys. Giovanni Bernard, A.J. Green, John Ross, Carl Lawson, William Jackson III, Mackenzie Alexander, Geno Atkins. All of these guys were starters, okay? So we'll break it down little by little here. You signed Trey Hendrickson to a contract that you should have gave Carl Lawson, and Carl Lawson is better than Trey. So I don't know. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't sit here and say that's a W. But it's definitely, you know, it's just, I don't know. I wouldn't have done that. I like that Riley Reef signing, but I mean, and then here's the part that kills me right here. This is this is the reason for my grading before I tell you my grade. You, you guys got Chidobe and Mike Hilton and to replace William Jackson III and Mackenzie Alexander. Think about that for one second. So you guys value Mike Hilton over William Jackson, and you guys value Chidobe over Alexander. 
I can't say the same thing. I like Jackson over Hilton. I like Alexander over Chidobe. So that's the reason why I gave them a D. So that's my greeting. Um, Spitz, what do you want to say about this one? Guys, I gave him a C minus. Okay, I wasn't quite as much of a dickhead as Jeff. Just, <laughs> um, I didn't spare my Ravens, okay? So I'm not sparing anybody else. That's fair. Um, yeah, listen, man. I mean, Bengals fans, listen. William Jackson said something on social media, so now Bengals fans, all of a sudden, William Jackson is trash. You know, you know how it goes. But uh, he's not trash, okay? I mean, all the advanced statistics tell you that he's not trash. He's not like some goaded cornerback, but he's like a top 20 corner, which there's 32 teams in the NFL. So if you're top 20, that makes you a number one. That's just basic math. Um, Mackenzie Alexander in the slot and Mike. Mike Hilton is definitely a better slot corner, but it's just like, I don't know. It, what really is bothering me is is – this, the Bengals offseason grade is going to go way up in the draft, hopefully. But losing A.J. Green and John Ross and not replacing them yet, uh, losing Carl Lawson for Trey Hendrickson. Carl Lawson is better and younger and got the same contract. Um, Geno Atkins was going to... Geno Atkins and A.J. Green were going to leave. We already knew that was coming, but that doesn't mean that we that it doesn't play into the grade. It still happened. Um, and Larry Ogunjobi is not making up for the loss of Geno Atkins. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, the expectation for the Bengals was to fix the offensive line in free agency, especially in free agency, so that they wouldn't have to necessarily worry about the draft as much and they could fix other stuff. All they did was sign Riley Reef. that's it. And he's good, but, like, you needed a replacement basically at all five spots. That's maybe, not save, maybe four out of five. Maybe you can keep Trey Hopkins at center, but, like, the most of that offensive line needed to be replaced, and they only did one. They under they they lowballed the, the crap out of Joe Thune. They missed out on uh, um, Try Turner. I think I don't, has he signed somewhere yet? They were talking to him. Hasn't been signed. So it's like you're failing on the offensive line. You brought in a couple corners. This just it. Hopefully it gets better in the draft. That's all I'm gonna say. C minus. And I know what most of you uh, Bengals fans are gonna say, like. We don't need John Ross. He had bricks for hands, and we had, we don't need A.J. Green. I know you love A.J. Green, but, you know, he's kind of on the end swing of his uh, career. And you guys think Boyd and T. Higgins, and you guys know we're probably going to get Chase. You guys think, well, we don't need those guys. Okay, well, depth is key, guys. What if those guys get hurt? You, you have them. Yeah. what? And also, right now, is. on April 13th, 2021, you don't have Jamar Chase. So our grade is based on right now. True. And right now, you lost so more than you gained. Us. Yeah, you lost more than you've gained so far. In free agency, C minus. We might give we'll you an A. Upgraded. We might give you an A plus for the draft, but for free agency, C minus. Okay, fair enough. I'll let you take the Browns. This one's a fun one. Cleveland Browns are currently maybe one of the best. Well, not maybe. They are one of the best managed teams in the league right now. Um, I gave them an A. Okay, they lost Larry Ogden. We just talked about him to the Bengals. But then they signed Malik Jackson. They lose Terrence Mitchell. That they signed Troy Hill. They lose Carl Joseph. But they signed John Johnson the third. So it's like everybody that they're this is the opposite of the Bengals. Everyone they're losing, they're replacing with someone better at the same position. And they signed Tack McKinley. And they're about to sign Jadavion Clowney. Uh W. That's an A. John Johnson the yeah, third is like the fifth. That's an A for me. I think he's the number five ranked safety overall last year or something like that. Like John Johnson the third is a stud. And the Cleveland second the Cleveland safety room in as a whole is just full of grown ass men. And Troy Hill is a is a better slot corner than what they had right now. That team Guys, yeah. is that's just I mean, Steelers fans, you can suck my dick. The Browns are the favorite in the AFC North right now. I'm, I don't care what anybody says. That's the best team in the AFC North. Will they win the AFC North? I don't know. It's the Browns. You never know year to year. But that is the best team in the AFC North. On paper. Suck it. Yeah. I mean, I just gave them an A just because, I mean, the pass rush alone and the secondary alone, you got – think about this, guys. You got we, – we know Clowney's probably going to go there. We can just assume that. So Clowney, McKinley, Miles Garrett – I'm, as a Ravens fan, 
they're preparing for Lamar Jackson's uh, wild, crazy runs, and they're they're they had enough of it. They're they're strapping up on the D line, and I'm nervous for us. I gave even though you know, Ravens fan gave him an A. Uh, going over to the Dallas Cowboys now. Um, I gave him a C. Gave him a C. This was a tough one. Because their additions, I mean, they pretty much took everybody from the Falcons. I make a joke, the Dallas uh, Falcons are... <laughs> so they get... I mean, so you got Keanu Neal. And then that's who you added. They, they, they added somebody else. I can't remember their name. But you lost to Doby. You lost Xavier. You lost Sean Lee sometime during the season. And Alden Smith, Joe Looney. So I feel like you're losing more than you're gaining here. I do like the Keanu Neal signing. But in general, I do give him a C. What do you think, Spitz? Yeah, I don't want the B minus just because I like Keanu Neal, especially if they like squeeze him down into like a like a linebacker thing. Um, also, part of my grade went towards the fact that they were able to finally sign Dak Prescott all the way because uh, that's just losing him would have been an F. So that's why I gave him a B minus. Like their free agency as a whole hasn't been that good, but retaining Dak Prescott kind of saved them a little bit. Um, I don't. I don't really. I don't. The offensive tackle and like the defensive lineman they added don't excite me that much. It's really just Keanu Neal and Dak <laughs> that are giving me the B minus. Losing Sean Lee, he was injured all the time. Alden Smith, he's he, he was okay. I don't think it's too big of a deal. B minus. Broncos. I'll, you can take this one. Yeah. So the Broncos. <laughs> The Broncos love their corners. They lost A.J. Bouye, but God damn it, they brought in Kyle Fuller and Ronald Darby, so who gives a damn um, about A.J. Bouye? Jesus Christ. Shout out to the Bears for just letting that happen. Uh, they signed Mike Boone at running back, whatever. They lost Philip Lindsay, so that kind of sucks a little bit, but I gave him a B. I mean, I just think that these two corners are such good additions, especially Kyle Fuller. That is such a huge W that... You weren't expecting to have when the offseason started. Nobody thought Kyle Fuller was going to be a free agent. So I like it. I gave him a B. Yeah. I mean, I originally gave him a C, but after looking at it right now, I think I might change this to a B on the spot for you guys just because, I mean, it's not always about replacing. It's like if, if you replaced with a better player, so what, you got rid of old veteran Boye with Kyle Fuller, and then you have some more depth with Darby, and then you have Mike Boone, who was I thought was a good, you know, a one-two punch with uh, Cooks over there in Minnesota. Phil Lindsay, I mean, that's I think Mike Boone's a little bit better in my opinion. And then we don't even know if Darrell Casey, we don't even know if he's gone. I mean, he's just on the block, I think, still. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna say B. I'm gonna say B minus. Now we got the Detroit Lions. Uh, <laughs> Detroit. Don't don't shoot me, okay, guys. I, before I give you my my grade here, just just hear me out here, guys. I'm gonna start with the losses here because this is gonna it's gonna be a long winded breath here. You got rid of uh, Matthew Stafford, Danny Amendola, Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, Muhammad Sanu, Jesse James, Danny Shelton, Justin Coleman, Desmond Trufant, Duran Harmon. Okay, those are losses. Oof. All losses. You've only added Michael Brockers, Jamal Williams, Rashad Perryman. Jared Goff, Tyrell Williams, Tyrell Williams, Tim Boyle, Randy Bullock, Charles Harris, Josh Hill, Alex Angeloni. Um, all of these sound like downgrades to me. Yeah, Alex Angeloni okay. is hot garbage. Just saying, Lions fans, don't get your goddamn excited about his stupid, long, flowy hair. Trash, bro. Get out. Yeah. Continue. I mean, guys, ha ha think about this. How do you go from Kenny Galladay to Brashad Perryman? <laughs> okay, how how does that happen? How does that happen? You pretty much, you let go of your entire wide receiver court in general. Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, Emma Hummin, Sanu, all gone. Jesse James, gone. So who do you guys... Jared Goff is going to go out there and throw to nobody. Rashad Perriman and Tyrell Williams, bro. They got to be I mean, drafting a wide receiver. Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith. God has to be, but it has to be. And then don't even get me started on the secondary. You guys got rid of Justin Coleman, Desmond Trufant, and Deron Harmon. That was... Honestly, your biggest name's on secondary defense. He didn't replace what him are you either. guys doing, Detroit? I gave him an F. Gave him I, gave him a, I gave him a C minus. The reason why I didn't give him an F is because uh, I think their goal was to blow the team up and, and lose a bunch of games. So they've succeeded at that. 
So I gave him a C minus. Um, but yeah, Alex Anzalone's buds. So don't get too excited. So was Randy Bullock. Terrible kicker, by the way. Just saying. Fat Randy. Fat Randy. Packers. This will be take about fucking 30 seconds. They, uh, they lost Corey Lindsley. They signed Jamal Williams and, T- and Tavon Austin. Or, no, that's, that's, they're all departures. Never mind. They lost Corey Lindsley, Jamal Williams, and Tavon Austin. And signed absolutely no one. They retained Aaron Jones, and that's the only reason they gave him a C-. minus. Guys, listen, I was reading something the other day that the reason why the Packers aren't signing any free agents is because they're not restructuring Aaron Rodgers' contract. And that potentially the reason why they're not restructuring Aaron Rodgers' contract, because for those of you nerds that don't know how restructuring works, it's not taking any money away from Aaron Rodgers before you start spamming the comments. Well, oh, Aaron Rodgers, maybe he doesn't want to restructure. He don't give a damn. He wants to win the Super Bowl. Back to my point. If they restructure Aaron Rodgers' contract, as you know, it backloads into next year, right? So it takes it puts all the bonuses, pays him now, and then his salary goes into next season. Makes it harder to trade him. That's all I'm going to say. You're basically taking the contract. So, like, let's just give you a quick example. Just I'll, I'll take you guys to school real quick about restructuring. <laughs> so, if there's a contract, say you got one year left, right? So, <laughs> what they could do is it, instead of having him p- get paid all that money for one year, they're going to stretch it out for four years, okay? That way you're, you're uh, releasing more cap for that year, but you're still paying him the same amount of money. You're just stretching it over more time. That's how restructuring yeah. works. And it takes the so, bonus. It's like Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, I think, has two years left on his contract, 2021 yeah. and 2022. So they're taking all the guaranteed money and, like, giving it to him now and then pushing the base salary all to 2022 is how it would work. Right. So if all the base salaries in 2022, that makes it harder for teams to match it in the trade. And so it's not confirmed. It was just an article I was reading from somebody, and I believe it was in Green Bay. And they're just saying, like, why are we not restructuring this guy's contract? Like you're making me nervous that you're that you're genuinely contemplating trading Aaron Rodgers next season because you're afraid to restructure his contract. There's no other reason not to. There's not a single reason not to restructure Aaron Rodgers' contract other than keeping the flexibility to trade him next season. So explain that to me, please. C minus. I gave him a D just because I mean. You guys overpay the hell out of Aaron uh, Aaron Jones. You let Jamal Williams walk, and then Corey, you lost Corey Lindsley. So I gave him a D. Uh, right. Houston Texans. Who? This was uh, an easy one for me to grade, uh, just because <laughs> I see all these names. They don't mean a thing to me. They're all. It's like it's like the land. <laughs> I think you said it earlier in our one of our podcasts before. It's like the land of a misfit toys here. Yeah, dude. Um. Shaq Lawson. I mean, you got Mark Ingram. Uh, who I are, see. What what Tyrod you see Taylor. here is you see a list of departures that's full of like stars, and then you see a list of additions that's a bunch of like bench warmers. That's what yeah. I see. Like you got rid of Wolf Fuller, JJ, and McKinney. So I gave him an F just because it, these are not replacements, guys. These like I I know you probably have an answer for JJ and Will and McKinney, and we don't know what's going on with Watson right now, guys. You can put me on paper. You can you can catch me in 4K saying this right now. But <laughs> I feel like they're going to be the bottom of the league. They're going to be the new. They're going to be zero and sixteen. I don't know if they're going to be like that bad, but I feel like oh, they're going to be the worst team in the NFL. God dang! I was like, I think Tyrod Taylor can get him one if Deshaun's not playing. Right. If Deshaun saying, Watson's like, playing, they're going to win at least four. We saw that this year. But yeah, that seems bonds. I gave him a D plus. Just, I'm. You know what surprises me? The fact that anybody even signed with Houston. That's why I call him the 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 Island of Misfit Toys because I got to imagine that they didn't have any other options because it just seems like everybody wants to leave Houston. Yeah. But the fact that anybody signs there tells me that like maybe they didn't have any other choice. Like Mark Ingram, like all these older guys, Mark Ingram and like who else is on here? Philip Lindsay. Etc. Like, did nobody else want you? Like, why the hell are you going to Houston for? There is no the uncertainty behind Deshaun Watson. Would I'm only playing for Houston if they pay me the most money? Basically, I I'd, the way that they that they treat their players there. I know Bill O'Brien's gone. I get it, but it's just the track record. I mean, Deshaun Bill O'Brien's gone, but Deshaun Watson still wants out. JJ Watt still wanted out. It's like, the culture at this point, the morale yeah, around the, morale the team, around like the damage Houston. is already done. It's just depressing to think about the Houston Texans. Yeah. 
It's rough. <clears throat> uh, Indianapolis Colts. What do you think? Um, I gave him a C plus. They traded for Carson Wentz, and he's playing for free. You'd love to see that. Um, other than that, though, they haven't really done anything. They can't really afford to. They lose Philip Rivers. Anthony Costanzo retired. That sucks. But I still give him a C plus. I don't think it's the worst offseason in the world. They needed to get a quarterback to replace Philip Rivers. And they did. So that's a W for me. C plus. I might have been a little bit too harsh with this one, uh, Indianapolis, but I gave him a D uh, just because oh. I like Phillip Rivers. I like him more than Wentz. I think it's a downgrade. I mean, I, I like the fact that you guys are not really paying Wentz. I mean, I'm, I'm really, when I grade these, I'm, I'm thinking more of like talent wise, like as far as like contract wise and money wise, W, but yeah, as far as like real. talent wise and maybe playoff run wise, uh, I don't think Carson Wentz is going to get it done like Phillip Rivers could. Anthony Costanzo, he's definitely either yeah, he's at least a Pro Bowler, I believe, and maybe a Hall of Famer. Uh, Danico Autry was doing really well next to um oh god, uh, DeForest Buckner, and Anthony Walker, he was doing really well with uh the other guy, I forgot his name as well. Damn, but um yeah, I mean I just like the defense. It was a very defensive uh, minded team, and yeah, I I feel like they've taken a shot. They have lost a lot of uh, starters. Gave him a D. Might have been a little bit too harsh with that one. Maybe a C minus. At best. Uh, yeah, Jacksonville Jeff Jaguars. Loves giving the D. <laughs> giving the D. God damn it. Jaguars, what do you think? Um, I gave him a B-. minus. They've signed a lot of dudes, but they've paid quite... Like, it's just not... Uh, like, Shaquille Griffin is a W, even though they paid him quite a bit of money. But everybody else, you know, Rayshon Jenkins... Carlos Hyde, Malcolm Brown, Marvin Jones Jr., Philip Dorsey. I like the receivers. I, it, they're doing fine. Um, their offseason is about to be an A once they nail the draft. Just for agency, just a B minus. I mean, it, like Marvin Jones Jr. and Philip Dorsey is cool. They've done what they were supposed to do, which is prepare the team for their new quarterback. Uh, the only thing that's keeping my grade a little bit low is I don't see any offensive line adjustments here. And so that's the only reason I gave him a B minus. Um, I gave him an A. Uh, might have been a little bit, might have been generous, but uh, I just, I like the Shaquille Griffin signing a lot. And I like the wide receivers. I mean, I feel like they only lost Keelan Cole. Okay. That's the only big departure that they had. So just, the fact that they've had all these additions, and then you look at the departures, I mean, I'm seeing a lot more positives than the negatives. Only one big negative for me is Keelan Cole, but you replace him with Marvin Jones and Philip Dorsett, and I'm sure they're probably going to get somebody in the draft, and you're strengthening that. I mean, we haven't seen a good corner in Jacksonville since Ramsey and Boye finally getting Griffin. So, I mean, I just, I just like what they're doing. I like how they're strapping up for uh, Trevor, and, yeah, I just... You gotta think about it. this is the Jaguars guys. We they're pretty quiet usually in the uh, off season sometimes, and I like I like it. I, I said it. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, um, man, go for it. So I gave them a B minus, B minus, um, just because. I mean, they didn't, they didn't do too bad. I mean, they lost Joe Thune. No, I'm sorry. They gained you. Th they gained him. They signed him, and they got Kyle Long out of retirement. Just, I mean, that's crazy to me that you got Joe and Kyle, but you lost Eric Fisher and Mitchell. So it's just like that seems like a right there. It's just you're strengthening your offensive line in different places. Um, you got. I mean, you got rid of Damian Williams, but he sat out last year. You really didn't even know he was gone. Mm -hmm. And Sammy Watkins. I mean, it's not like he was seeing the ball that much anyway. And you get rid of Le'Veon Bell. Anthony Sherman retired. I mean. I don't think the losses and the departures are as heavy as it looks, so that's why I gave him a B minus. Yeah, I gave him a B. The losses, outside of maybe the tackles, the losses aren't that. Like if they didn't, if they didn't lose their two starting tackles, it would be an A. But you know, I guess they just felt like their guards were a bigger need, and then that's all they needed to do. We saw what happened in the Super Bowl. <laughs> So yeah. they they put their focus on uh, the guys getting towards in the Super Bowl, and there you go, good for them. And they were in a really bad cap situation, so to even be able to sign Joe Thune That's after true. being in that situation is pretty impressive, honestly. Because the Saints sure as hell couldn't do that. 
Yeah, that was the Chiefs. Um, so the Raiders, the Raiders, I gave them a D. Um, I'll again. tell you why. So <laughs> I might, I feel like I'm a little, I might be a little harsh this entire time. But I mean, <laughs> sometimes maybe I don't know. So here's what, here's why though. So they got Nagakwe, they got John Brown, they got Kenyon Drake. And they got uh, Quentin Jefferson departures, though. Here's what killed me right here, okay? So, yeah, you got John Brown, but here's what you lost. You lost Nelson Aguilar. I know he was the king of drops. Uh, Tyrell Williams. Jason Witt retired. You got rid of Trent Brown. You got rid of Rodney Hudson. You got rid of, you got rid of McKinley. You got rid of Joyner. You got rid of Eric Harris. So, I see a lot of quality names there for the most part. And I don't see a whole lot of replacements. That's that's the reason why I'm like, eh. Is I, McKinley, you, got, you know, you took Nagakwe instead. And then John Brown over tyrell williams i don't know i just gave him a d i don't know i just i don't think it's an improvement really i don't see it's not even a wash to me yeah i gave him a c minus it's pretty much the same thing just uh like when you if you just look at the additions only it's like oh wow not bad dude you got Kenyon drake you know john brown nice job the only one like john brown and Kenyon drake are cool i just like you said the losses are kind of rough and uh Honestly, I think the Raiders, they just seem to be destined to go 8-8 eight and eight every single season, no matter who they have. So I'd give them a C-. Especially with that line, that's that's the, like kind of the last straw for me was Trent Brown and Rodney Hudson. They were probably some of your best yeah. guys on the line. You lost them. So that run game is uh, going to be rough with Kenyon Drake. Um, Chargers, I'll let you take this one. Um, the Chargers, man, they, they I gave them a B plus. They saw what happened to Joe Burrow, and unlike the Bengals, they bang, 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 signed three offensive linemen like right away. Corey Lindsley, the best center, arguably. Matt Filer, one of the better tackles. And then Ode Abushi as another tackle. And then they lost Hunter Henry to the pass, but they spring in Jared Cook, who I know I, I, I have my issues with Jared Cook, but Jared Cook is not garbage. Jared Cook is very good, and Jared Cook's probably actually going to be really, really good with Justin Herbert in that offense. So they, you know, they, they, they lose Hunter Henry, Mike Pouncey, who are tired, Perriman. No, it's just not, those losses don't bother me, but the additions I like a lot, B plus. Yeah. I gave them a B just because I just, I, I love what they've been able to do. It's almost like they've lost a, like a quality position and they replace it with either as good or better. I mean, Mike Pouncey retires. What do you do? You sign Corey Lindsley. Uh, Hunter, Hen Hunter Henry goes to the Patriots. You go ahead and sign Jared Cook. I just I just like it. I like it a lot. Um, I gave him a B. So, yeah, Chargers doing a good job. Uh, the Rams. The Rams. So, they added Matthew Stafford. It looks like they're trying to win now. Um, here's the thing that kind of gets me with the grading, though. So, yes, they added Matthew Stafford. Great. That's awesome. Great news. Deshaun Jackson. Okay, Roadrunner. Cool. But you lose... You lose Josh Reynolds, you lose Michael Brockers, you lose John Johnson, you lose Troy Hill, and the, throughout the trade, obviously, you lost Jared Goff. Gave him a C plus just because, I mean, yes, Matthew Stafford is awesome, but I feel like you lost a lot. You lost John, you lost Michael, you lost Troy, and I don't think Deshaun is a proper replacement for Josh Reynolds. That's why that's why I gave him a C plus. Yeah, I gave him a B minus. It's basically the same grade, honestly. Uh, same thing. Yeah, they added Matt Stafford, and that's awesome, and they should be a really good team. But in terms of grading the offseason, they just lost too much. I mean, John Johnson and Troy Hill both going to the Browns. Like we said earlier, John Johnson's top five. Troy Hill's pretty good. So it's just uh, they don't have the cap space to add anybody. So they're kind of just stuck here with the team that they have, adding Matt Stafford and Deshaun Jackson. I, but I still think they're going to be really good. They just lost a lot of guys. I give them a B-. minus. A lot of casualties for sure. Uh, Miami Dolphins. I give them a B plus just because I like I like their additions a lot. They got McKinney, they got Justin Coleman, they got William Fuller, uh, and then you got Matt Skura, which I mean he might play better for you guys because he did not play for better for Baltimore. Um, departures though, Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean that's fine because I think Tua this is his time. Maybe he had he had enough time to sit there and study behind Fitzpatrick. Maybe he knows what is open now in the NFL. Matt Burita. I mean, it hurts because he was one of the faster uh, running backs, but I think um, I talked about him last week who had a breakout. I think he's going to have a breakout season. I can't remember his name at the moment, but I think he's fine. And then Shaq Lawson 
it, it kind of hurts a little bit. And then got Chalk and Kyle, Kyle Van Noy. So it seems like, yeah, you lost some stuff on defense, but it looks like you kind of uh, you took care of that in other places. So I gave him a B plus. Yeah, I gave him a B minus because of all, a lot of the guys they lost, but uh, they need wide receivers and Will Fuller is a W. So that brings their grade back up. Um, I think, obviously, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick, that was kind of a casualty that we all knew was going to happen. But he was such a good, like, mentor and, like, coach for Tua that that's an L for me. And then, you know, Kyle Van Noy is unfortunate. But I also give him a B- minus because of the addition of William Fuller, mostly. Uh, Minnesota Vikings. What do you think about this one? This was tricky for me. Yeah, the Vikings are just kind of not... Like, it's just... I gave him a C+. Plus. Um... Almost solely because of Patrick Peterson. I think it's just the shock factor of the fact that he went to the Vikings. I, I didn't see that coming at all. Um, I swore he was going to stay with the Cardinals. So that was a huge win for them. Um, I don't really worry about Nick Vigil too much, Stephen Weatherly, these guys. I think it's really just Patrick Peterson. And the guys they lost, Riley Reef. that's a, that's an oof. Um, Anthony Harris, Kyle Rudolph. I might have been a little bit generous with the C plus to be honest with you, but um, they needed help on defense, and that's what they've done. They lost some offense to help on defense. They also added we don't have it on yeah. here, but they got they got Mac Alexander back, so it's kind of like hmm, yeah, C plus. <clears throat> um, I mean, it seems like I switch my opinions about the Minnesota Vikings on a weekly basis here, <laughs> and I'm guess I'm going back to two weeks ago where I thought they weren't going to be so great. I'm I'm giving them a D here just because. There I mean, goes the Jeff with the damn D's again, bro. This guy I'm giving out the D's today, guys. I'm giving <laughs> out, out the D, D's. bro. God, um, the D is for sale. The D's for sale. I mean, the, here's the reason why, though. I mean, <clears throat> Patrick Peterson, yes. Dalvin Tomlinson, yes. But, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing a whole lot of big quality losses here. I mean, Kyle Rudolph, he was your guy for a long time. Riley Reef. I mean, now I'm worried about Kirk Cousins now. Or, uh, Eric Wilson was over there. So was Anthony Harris. I mean, those guys were, I mean, the, the Vikings were good on defense. So it's just like, I don't know anymore. I feel like I just, I'm telling you, I just, I, I'm all over the place with the Vikings. This week I'm going to be a D and maybe next week I might be a B. Who knows? Make some more moves, I guess, Minnesota. Here we, I don't know. All right. Uh, New England Patriots. I'll let you take this one. This was this one was fun, I guess. I, I don't want to have all the fun. Patriots are gonna make my voice go away. Um, I gave him a B. They lose Joe Thune, which is unfortunate. They have Patrick Chung and Julian Edelman retire, which is unfortunate. But they signed the whole goddamn free agent class, so. I gave him a B. Uh, the only reason it's a B is because they had to pay a lot of money for these phrases that they swipe, that they sniped. Um, you got John New, Hunter Henry, Judon, Jalen Mills, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Godchow, Trent Brown trade, Henry Anderson, Kyle Van Noy. I mean, holy shit. You spent a lot of money. Hopefully it pays off. I don't know if it's going to pay off, though. And that's why I gave him a B. But they have set Cam Newton up for like a, a rebound this year. So hopefully that happens because I like Cam. Yeah. I mean, I gave him a B plus as well. Um, I mean, I just like what they've been doing. It seems like they've been super, most, probably the most active team in the NFL when it comes to the off season. I mean, yeah, Julian Edelman retired. That's, I mean, you know, that's great and all, but I mean, it just, I think they knew uh, that was, I think they knew that was coming also, by the way, I think yeah, they knew. I mean, they probably, True. I mean, I just I think that too. Just I mean, he wasn't really do that much of a factor last year as well. It's been so hard, they probably yeah. just saw it. And Joe, I mean, that's probably the biggest loss to me. But okay, you have one loss, and then you have all these games. You got John who Hunt. I'm not gonna rename everybody because I'll be sitting here talking <laughs> for five minutes. But um, yeah, guys, B plus, good job in New England. Yep. All right. So now we have now we have the Saints. And uh, I was really hype about the Saints in our first episode because of how we fixed the cap situation. But now I'm getting a little bit pissed because we're not doing anything with the cap that we saved. Uh, we've signed Alex Arma and Nick Vanette. We signed a fullback, guys, and we signed a backup tight end. That's it. That's it. Meanwhile, we've lost our starting Hall of Fame quarterback, Drew Brees, Emmanuel Sanders, Jared Cook, Trey Hendrickson, Quan, 
Alex Anzalone, Janoris Jenkins, Josh Hill, and Sheldon Rankins. I just named nine starters. I named nine star. Excuse me, eight. Josh Hill was a backup tight end. I'm sorry. Excuse me. We've signed nobody. Now we're talking to Richard Sherman still. We're having, obviously, we were supposed to have already restructured, or uh, excuse me, extended and restructured Marshawn and Ryan Ramchek, which we haven't done yet. And I'm sure Marshawn's been delayed by jail. And I'm sure that Ryan Ramchek has probably been delayed by money. I don't know. But come on, bro. Like, hurry up. The good news is Richard Sherman said that he's not expecting to sign a deal until after the draft. So that gives us time. But figure it out because right now we're rocking a C minus. I mean, this has been horrible. We we got out of the cap situation with nine casualties that weren't super important, but we haven't replaced them yet. And obviously we still have the draft. I'm not too worried about it. But right now, because the draft hasn't happened yet, this is a solid C minus. And the only reason it's as high as a C minus is A, we got out of cap hell. B, we kept J Jameis Winston. That's the that's it. Guys, I mean, you know, I've been on a roll today. I'm, I'm giving, the, I'm giving out the D again, boys. Bang. I'm giving out the D. Um, <laughs> guys, I'm not sparing anybody today. I'm not. Um, I didn't do it for my Ravens. I'm not going to start now. Uh, the only reason why I gave such a harsh grade is because, like, what? I mean, there's no quality additions here, guys. No quality additions. And I get it. Like the Saints were already competitive. They were already in the playoffs. I get it. It's not really about it. But I mean, when you lose this many starters, this many quality starters, you lose Drew Brees, you lose E, you lose Jared Cook. I know how you guys feel about him in the playoffs, but he still was a good tight end. Trey Hendrickson, Quan. I mean, guys, I'm concerned. Dude, when, when Sheldon Rank Sheldon Rankins should be like your third most important player that you like at most. If you're going to cut nine people, Sheldon Rankins should be like the third best person that you cut. Sheldon Rankins is ninth. We cut eight people better than Sheldon Rankins and Sheldon Rankins. And having, that's how bad this has gone. It, was, it looked so good when it was just like, oh, yeah, we're clearing this cat. We don't need this guy. We don't need that guy. But we, this, if they don't nail the draft, uh, we're in trouble. It's rough. I mean, um, obviously my grade will change. Saints fans, once you get uh, Richard Sherman, if you guys get Richard Sherman. Or what, Josh right Norman or anybody, just anyone. Like, we need corners. I understand you want to draft Asante Samuel Jr. probably, but, like, God damn it, he's, we still need another one. We play three corners most of the time. Like, do not go into 2021. If I turn on my TV to Fox, Saints versus whoever, and I look on my screen on the first play of the game on defense, the starting lineups, and I see number 20 goddamn six, P.J. Williams, on the field. The TV is being turned off, and I'm going somewhere else. I'm sick of this man. Stop it. Sign secondary. God damn. Why are we signing Nick Vanette and Alex Arma? Why? What, it, 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 that's a waste. It's a waste. C minus. Let's move on. Move on. Uh, New York Giants. I, like I said, I've been loving what this organization's been doing, guys. They got Kenny Galladay. They got Kyle Rudolph. You got John Ross. You got Adoree Jackson. Very, very good additions. Uh, departures, though, you got rid of David Mayo. You got rid of Dalvin Tomlinson, Kevin Zietler, Golden Tate, Wayne Gallman, Dion. L so, real quick. All of these are running backs, okay? You pretty much only have Saquon Barkley out there by himself right now. Because, again... Wayne Gallman, Deion Lewis, Devonta Freeman, Alfred Morris, all gone. So, I mean, I still gave them a B, but I'm just saying, like, if Saquon Barkley gets hurt, you might be in trouble, guys. You might be in trouble. Not unless you find, I don't know what you guys got for him. But I just, I love what you guys have done on the offense, and that is literally what's powering me to give you guys a B. Ain't there, it's put up or shut up right now for Danny Dimes. B, guys. I give him a B. I went B plus. They addressed all the weaknesses. They did sign Devontae Booker as their backup running back, by the way. So they oh, do yeah, have a second. The yeah, they have a second one on there. But yeah, you're right. I mean, they, they I, I wouldn't be surprised for them to be drafted in fifth or sixth round of running back just to be safe. But yeah, it's rough. I mean, but I just like, I just, I do the Kenny, you can't hate the Kenny Galladay sign. I don't care how much money it is. 
there's just no more excuses. They have the weapons now. Kyle Rudolph is an awesome tight end still. Adore Jackson. And then Adore Jackson. And the Giants defense was already good. James Bradbury and the boys out there. So adding Adore Jackson is nice. Losing Golden Tate, whatever. You got Kenny Galladay for crying out loud. Um, and John Ross. Who, if you can just catch the ball, John Ross is good. So losing Kevin Zietler is probably what kept them away from the A range because uh, they didn't really address that yet. But the offensive weapons, I very much like. I like it a lot. Play another team that I like a lot, the New York Jets. New York Jets, yeah. guys. Um, so additions, we got Corey Davis. So that's a huge uh, improvement over Brashad Perryman. And then you got Carl Lawson, who was a beast over there in Cincinnati. And then uh, you got Keelan Cole, LaMarcus Joyner, Sheldon Rankins, Tyler Croft. I mean, I, I'm loving all of these, all of this depth. I'm loving the quality. Uh, yeah, you got rid of Sam Darnold, but we all know what's going to happen. That pick number two, guys. I mean, I already talked yeah, about it real. last for my breakout. Zach Wilson is definitely going to be a thing. Uh, and then you got rid of Jordan Jenkins, who, I mean, he was kind of quiet over there in Houston. So I give him an A. I give him an A, guys. Yeah, I went A minus. Not much different. Um, I don't really have much to add. I think the you know, Carl Loss. It's just they've they've added starters. Basically, all these guys: Davis, Loss, and Davis, Cole, Joiner. All these guys are starters. So, um, and Sheldon Rankins even. So I mean, they just improved on all those positions. And you know, like I said, losing Sam Darnold. Losing your starting quarterback would normally be an L, but not when Zach Wilson's about to be there. So no no bad losses and good additions gives you an A minus. Then we have a team that could it's still, I feel like they're gonna be in trouble in their division, but gave them a C. The Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, I like what they did with getting Anthony Harris. And you know I love my boy Joe Flacco. <laughs> but these departures hurt, okay? Yeah. You got Carson Wentz, gone. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, gone again. Jalen Mills, gone. Malik Jackson, gone. So, I mean, okay, say we were talking about this off cam. You know, we're talking maybe week four or five, and Jalen Hurts might not be feeling it anymore. I mean, who's going to come in? Joe Flacco? I mean, I gave, I gave him a C. I don't yeah. know. I gave him a B- minus just because they didn't have much cap to do anything anyways. So, you know, they knew they were going to lose, probably lose Jalen Mills, um, Deshaun Jackson, et cetera. And so and Camp Carson Wentz wasn't even their starter anymore, so that's not a loss. And they added Anthony Harris with, despite not having that much cap and Andrew Adams. So, I don't know, dude. I, it's, they, I, think, that's, I think they're the worst team in the NFC East. But, uh, you know, they did about as good as they could so far in terms of Free agency. Now, when it comes to that draft pick trade, I'm not sure about that still. We'll have to see how that plays out. But I think they're putting themselves in a position to rebuild. But right now, they're not having that good of a, an offseason. And I will tell you about a team that I think has had one of the worst off seasons. And again, I did not spare any team, not my own not anybody. So don't say this is a bias thing because it's not. Pittsburgh Steelers get an F from me, oh, and I'll boy. tell you why. So the additions, I mean, I don't see any quality additions here. Uh, Joe Haig, Miles Killebrew, BJ Finney, Tyler Simmons. Okay. Now let's talk about departures. This is what kills me here, guys. Marquise mm -hmm. Pouncey retired. Bud Dupree got overpaid over there in Tennessee. Mike Hilton. We were talking maybe top five in slot corners. Gone. Steven Nelson. Gone. Sean Davis. Gone. James Conner. Gone. So I don't see any secondary. Um, I'm not. It's looking rough. I mean, I don't even know who's going to be. Who's going to even be your running back, guys? Kevin Balaje or Balaj or whatever you call him. I don't know. F. Sorry. <laughs> F. Um. Steelers Nation. I was a little bit uh, more understanding of your situation. As a Saints fan, dealing with the uh, cap, you know, Jeff, I want you to take into consideration that Big Ben is basically making their entire salary cap. 
on his own. But he he said he'd come back for free, and they're still <laughs> cutting everybody. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like the Bud Dupree one, they definitely wanted to re-sign him, but I don't think anybody anticipated that $16 million a year contract. So you can't really be too mad about that one. Mike Hilton, that sucks. Steven Nelson, I don't know what happened there. It was like, just all of a sudden, it was like, I want to be traded, and then they just cut him. So I don't know what happened. So that one sucks. Sean Davis, um, was he a starter? I believe so. So he was a he was he was opposite of Minka. I believe so. Um, so I mean, I, you can double check yeah. me on that one, Pittsburgh. But. Yeah. So that's that's you know, and then James Conner, that was he's been injured. That was kind of a mutual thing. Uh, Benny Snow was their running back last year, anyways, and they can always draft running back in the first round, which I heard them talking about all the time between Najee Harris and Travis Etienne. So they're not going to give a damn about James Conner if if they have that situation, but. I give him a C minus, dude. I I wasn't trying to hate on it too much, just because, you know, I was. I, they they just they can't add anybody. They don't have any any money to do so. But at the same time, yeah, they lost a lot of dudes. I can't give them a good grade. But I think they've I think they've maintained like they they've controlled the bleeding decently. I think, just not. Uh, they're falling behind the Browns and the Ravens, though, for sure. If they're not careful, it's going to be Cincinnati as well. Yeah, Cincinnati drafts well, yeah. And then we got the 49ers. Um, I'll let you take this one. Um, yeah, I mean, they haven't. They got even B minus. They lost Kendrick Bourne and Richard. Well, Richard Sherman is still a free agent, and he's still open to coming back. But Tevin Coleman. Um, They've only they've brought in Alex Mack, who we've talked about earlier as being like a Hall of Fame caliber center, even though he's older. Don't really care too much about their signings. I gave him a B minus because they kept Trent Williams. That was like the biggest free agent in the entire goddamn thing, and they got him and they paid him and he's there. And so therefore, that's a B minus. Whenever you whenever you have the best free agent available, and you are able to resign him, I can't give you less than a B minus. It's impossible. Because the amount of competition they were having for him, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like if if uh, if Lamar Jackson's a free agent in two years, and you guys manage to re-sign him over everybody else that's offering him a big ass bag, even if you lost half your team, you're still giving the Ravens a B minus. It's just how it works. It's fair. It's fair. <laughs> um. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't think about that too hard when I was grading. Um, I gave him a C just because, I mean, yeah, you get Alex Mack, but, I mean, think about the weight of these guys. Kendrick Bourne, I mean, he was a rising star for 49ers. Richard Sherman, I mean, he's been a Hall of, he's definitely a Hall of Famer. He, he might not even stay. I'm assuming he's leaving. That's why the C is there. He, I, I'm pretty sure he's gone. If he stays, fine, I'll fix my grade. Um, Tevin Goldman, I mean, that was the part of the beast. For the 49ers, I mean, you had all of these guys like Matt Breida, you had Raheem Mostert, Tevin Coleman, all these guys run the ball. Now you're kind of limiting the run committee. You're kind of only sticking now to Rashad, um, and it's just, I don't know. I mean, Raheem, I'm sorry, Raheem Mostert, and it's just, I don't know. I I think I get a I give a C for now. Like I said, if you, if, I like the trend. I like how you guys kept him, but I don't weigh that into my grading. Um, I just look at purely what you guys kept, what you guys lost, and that's why I gave him a C. Fair enough. Now we got Seattle. Seattle. I'm so uh, sorry. I'm so sorry, Seattle. I'm gonna let you talk because I don't want to get too harsh here. I've I've been a little harsh lately, so yes. I'll let you I'll let you start on the positive note. Yeah, I mean, it's not looking good for Seattle. Um, in this whole Russell Wilson thing. You, you you bring in what? You bring in Gerald Everett, Gabe Jackson at guard. I mean, that's okay for an offensive line adjustment, but like, uh, why did you bring in Gabe Jackson? Because you lost Mike Iapati. He retired. So you don't even really improve there. You just save face. And then you lose Shaq Griffin and Quentin Dunbar. Oh boy, you sign in order to replace two corners, you sign a Kello Witherspoon. Like, are you serious? You lose David Moore to the Panthers. I mean, Russell will like Russell Wilson says, I want weapons and an O line. And what happens? You lose your weapon 
David Moore and you lose <laughs> you you barely maintain the O line. I'm confused. I just feel like I'm gonna hot take right now on the show. Y'all can come back to this. Luckily, there's only gonna be like 50 people that watch this. Nobody cares about us. Russell Wilson, 100% chance that he is traded next off season. Ooh. Yep, 100% Guys, I chance. Have that think, time stamp. I think the bridge is already burned. It's over. Next off, they're gonna. He, he's I, he loves. He Seattle is his home. He's gonna give him one more chance. It's not gonna work out. He's out of there to not the Bears, but maybe the Eagles, uh, New Orleans. Uh, what was the other team that he had besides the Bears? I don't. I think the Bears are out. They're just falling apart. But there's another team that he had on his list. I can't remember who. But one of those teams are gonna swoop in because Seattle's management is just bad. They've been bad since they were. They should have been a dynasty. And they've the Legion of Boom completely fell apart. Everything's falling apart. Thank God they drafted DK Metcalf. That's the only positive thing that's happened in the last five years for them. It's bad. I gave him a C though. Yeah. Guys, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> um, I mean, pretty much he pretty much said everything, but like, uh, you know, I have to come in here with some a little bit of attitude. I mean, I gave him an F, guys. I mean, think about <laughs> this. Guys, Russ, just like Spitz just said, he wants weapons. He wants protection. I mean, Mike is not going to be a, a good enough replacement. I mean, Gabe is not a good enough replacement for Mike. And I think that's the only good thing that you guys have done. Greg Olson, he's I think he's better than Gerald Everett, and I mean that's not a good replacement. You lost your you lost your entire secondary. Shaquille Griffin, Quentin Dunbar, Jaron Reed, David Moore. I mean, Carlos Hyde. I mean, what are you guys gonna do? What who Russ has two good receivers now, and he maybe has one good running back. I'll tell you what too. Not even a tight end anymore. I'll tell you what too. That's gonna be a big proof of what I'm saying about Russell Wilson is when they don't sign Antonio Brown. Russell Wilson is crying and begging and pleading to sign Antonio Brown and they will not and that'll start the downfall I'm telling you right now. Antonio Brown is going to go play for the Ravens or some shit like that and Russell Wilson is going to be pissed for 16 weeks of this season until he can get to next offseason and get traded. Yeah, guys, I, ha- I had to do it. I haven't spared a single team up to this point, and I'm not going to start now. Yeah, I mean, God dang, I, I said all that and still gave him a C. This guy, Jeff, just comes in with a – it's like good cop, Blame bad cop out here. Boom. Uh, but I was very pleased with this next team, guys, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They didn't lose really anybody. Just saying Antonio Brown, Hague? maybe. Yeah. Okay, Antonio Brown, but, like, that was already, like – it doesn't really matter. They can just, yeah, they can point. just put Scotty Miller in there. You know so what I'm saying? Got like, Giovanni cares? Bernard. I mean, that's the only big addition that we've seen lately. Guys, I gave him an A. You pretty much kept everybody from the Super Bowl team. And this is this was already a dream team. Remember last year when they were just picking out everybody? Who do you want, Brady? I want Gronk. Who do you want? I want this guy. I want Antonio Brown. He got anything he wanted. He got everybody, everything that come on over. Everybody they on kept Earth. All that. Everybody on Earth thought that Julian Edelman was going to go to the Buccaneers before he retired. Like when it said that he was being released, I was like, Oh bucks, hundred percent. But then yeah. he's too injured, I guess. But yeah, it's just one of those things where I'm sitting here. Like who's all the big name free agents that are left. Larry Fitzgerald, probably going to the bucks, Adrian Peterson bucks. Like anytime I see a fucking free agent, I just assume they're going to the Buccaneers. I gave him an A minus though. Cause the only reason is because they haven't brought Antonio Brown back. I'm just being petty. Honestly, like it, it, you, to have a perfect off season, it would bring every single player back for the Buccaneers. They're missing one guy, and he's not going to come back most likely. But still, the Buccaneers probably going to come back and run the NFC again next year. It's cool. It's fine. Saints are rebuilding for a couple of years. I'm, I'm fine with that. Go ahead and have your run, Tom Brady. Go win your 10 Super Bowls or whatever you're trying to do. That's fine. <laughs> we'll let you have that. I'm cool with that. Yeah, Buccaneers, bro. I wish I could make them look better in my franchise. Anyway, uh, Damn. Tennessee Titans. <laughs> so additions uh bud dupree they gave him the bag uh, they get Danico autry uh janoris jenkins and wow. morgan cox josh reynolds so yes i hear all these ad- additions tennessee i hear all these additions but here comes where it kind of gets a little uh 
where it gets kind of bad for me as far as the grading. So you guys lose Corey Davis, you guys lose Adam Humphreys, you guys lose Johnny Smith, you guys lose Isaiah Wilson, you guys lose. Jade he's. I'm assuming he's gone. Jaden yeah, Clown. I mean, he's going to see the Cleveland tomorrow. Uh, Malcolm Butler, Adoree Jackson, Desmond King. Who do you have at corner, guys? I don't. I think your entire secondary just left. Malcolm Butler, Tory <laughs> Jackson, Desmond King, gone. All of them. What? You were already having problems in the secondary. I watched the Browns game last season, guys. D. You guys get a D for me. There comes the D. The, I'm giving out Ds. I gave you guys a C plus. Just because of... Uh, you, you overpaid for Bud Dupree, but you got him. So that gives you a C plus for me. Janoris Jenkins is... Is he their number one right now? I, I have to assume so. That's bad, guys. You don't want that, Tennessee. I'm telling you right now. You do not want that. You do not want to get to the AFC playoffs and go against a team that has Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry and have Janoris Jenkins guarding either of them. You want Janoris Jenkins number three. So you got you better do something. Draft. Are you going to draft anybody that's better than Janoris Jenkins off rip, though? Like, God, you guys really are struggling in the secondary. Holy smokes. It almost seems, it almost seems like they're preparing their team to only face the Ravens. They were like, well, the Ravens don't throw the ball, so we don't need corners. But they do run the ball a lot, so we need Danico Autry and Bud Dupree. Yeah, just that's all, yeah, for real. Like, forget about the Steelers that have goddamn wet receivers for days. Forget about the Chiefs, Tyreek Hill. Forget about that. Let's just focus on the Ravens' run game. Oh my like, gosh! Hey, they stopped on our they stopped on our logo in the middle of the field. We stopped on yours. Now there's this crazy rivalry, and we're almost focused on each other at this point. Explain to me, explain this. to me how a team with Janoris Jenkins at number one is guarding the Chiefs. Somebody like in the I comments said, say, if "There's a Titans fan team. watching this. Please let me know. Please justify that. Please justify the the Titans secondary right now because I yeah." That's depressing. I gave, him a C, I gave him a C plus though because I'm not Jeff and I don't hand out the D every every five minutes. But y'all are y'all are yeah yikes. Yeah. And then last but certainly not least is the Washington football team. Let's go. I gave them a B plus. Um, reason being, you know, you got Ryan Fitz, uh, you know, Fitz Magic. You got uh, William Jackson the third, Curtis Samuel. So you got finally got someone to throw to other than Terry. Um, I think it's an upgrade from uh, Ronald Darby to get William Jackson a third. Um, and we, I mean, Ryan Kerrigan's still there from what I know. So until he leaves, I think it's a B plus for me. I went with an A minus. I, uh, they needed a quarterback just in case. Um, wow, what's his name? Holy crap. Heineke. Uh, Heineke. Just in case Heineke um, turns out to be a bum. It's nice to have Fitz back there. We saw that with Miami. They put Tua out there. Tua was struggling a little bit. They threw Fitz in. Fitz win the game for you. Come back. Coach Tua on the sideline. Same situation here. I like that. Uh, William Jackson III, nice signing. Curtis Samuel, huge, huge signing because Terry McLaurin's just been by himself for so long. I say for so long. He's only been in the league for, what, two years? But it seems like so long. Yeah. Um, I like it. I would have given him an A-plus, though, if they actually fixed their goddamn name. They're really going to rock in two seasons in a row with football team. That's crazy. How do you not figure out what <laughs> really? Can I tell you I something? Think they're about? having this hard of a time. Um, it's going to get to the point where they are a Washington football team, and then they're going to change the name. And it's going to suck. We're going to miss football team. Like, like it's I mean, becoming, it's becoming like a like we're, we're all starting to fall in love with the name Washington football team. At least I am. I'm. It's growing on me as well. Yeah. Just honestly, Washington literally just put out a poll for your fans and have your fans decide. Obviously, don't give them some crazy options like. I don't know, Washington douchebags or anything like that. Don't do something <laughs> stupid like that. But, you know, Red Wolves or what, I like Red, Red Warriors. Wolves. I don't yeah. know, something cool like that. And just have the fans decide. Just as easy as that. But I yeah, like as Red far Wolves. as uh, Red, AMC, Wolves, Red Wolves and Warriors, man. I think Washington Warriors would be sick. But the problem is they have an NBA team called Warriors. I don't know if they want to infringe on that. But mm. still like it, though. But, yeah, Washington football team is growing on me way too quickly. They got to fix that ASAP. Yeah. But yeah, guys, um, so that is our grades for the offseason. Uh, as you can see, like I was kind of a little bit more harsh with some of these teams. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, guys, what do you guys think about how the way we graded? Do you, like, do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Please go into the comments section below and let us know what you guys think. Obviously, we want to hear you guys' feedback. 
uh, this podcast, you know, I mean, it doesn't really work without you guys' support and interaction because it kind of gives us ideas for the next episode as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, guys, I awesome, awesome. Uh, anything else you want to add, Spitz? Um, no, not really, man. Like you said, just leave in the comments if you if you want, you can give a grade for every single team. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but at least give us a grade for your favorite team, or let us know why we're stupid, because I'm sure we're gonna hear a lot of that. Um, we're very opinionated when it yeah, came we're to gonna this get, stuff. We're gonna so get, I'm sure I'm gonna get trolled we're about to get or praised. On. Yeah, we're getting shit on for sure. But it's cool though. That's what the podcast is for. You guys watch ESPN. You're supposed to say controversial stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. I guess uh, this is on Jeff's channel, so make sure you subscribe and smash the like button. And uh, that's all I got, dude. Awesome. All right, guys, so I guess we'll wrap it up. Um, yeah, so the next episode is going to be on Spitch's channel, so guys, make sure you're there for the next one, and we will catch you next time, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and that's it for us, guys. Peace out. Peace.